Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the visual resolution of peripheral vision, the visual resolution of central vision, the distribution of rods and cones, and then we'll finish with a summary. So there's different resolutions for the rods and the cone cells, and we need to understand why they have these different resolutions. The resolution of our vision changes depending on what environment we're in. So sometimes in our environment the resolution is bad, like this, where it's all blurry and non-focused, and then sometimes it's very, very good. And the resolution basically refers to how clearly two objects are separate. So if it's nice and sharp and focused, we can see all the individual objects in this room. If the resolution is poor, then we can see that the objects are less well-defined and it's harder to distinguish specific points. Our lowest resolution, or the least focused area in our retina, is in our peripheral vision. So we've got two types of vision. We've got peripheral and central. Peripheral vision mainly covers this area and this area, all of the areas to the side and to the top and bottom of our eye. So these are two areas of peripheral vision. Central vision is, as you might expect, at the back of the retina in the center. So the peripheral is the one with the lowest resolution and the central is the best. So anything in our periphery, if you are looking at something, if you look at the top, right, left and bottom area without actually turning your eye to them, they will be the least focused objects in your environment. The bits you're looking at directly through your eye will be the most focused. The reason that the peripheral vision is of a lower resolution is that because this part of the retina contains mostly just rod cells. So remember, rod cells, named because of their rod shape, are for low intensity light and mainly for black and white colours. So these areas around the periphery, the top, bottom and sides, are mainly these rod cells. Rod cells are known to have a poorer resolution. We already said in the previous video that multiple rod cells connect to one single bipolar cell. So here, for example, we have three rod cells sending their information via synapses to one single bipolar cell. And from this bipolar cell, the information will go on to the brain. If we take a scenario where the light levels are very, very low and the light hits one of these rod cells, it causes an action potential in that rod cell and then an action potential in the bipolar cell which is then sent to the brain. So we have a low level of light hitting for example rod cell number one. The rod cell sends an action potential across to the bipolar cell which sends an action potential over to the ganglion cell and then this goes up to the brain. And in this case what we're saying is there's no light for numbers two and three. So these two aren't firing. If we had the same level of light, but instead the light hits a different rod cell than the first one, and we're talking about the same bipolar cell, it causes the same response. So let's say that this time the low level of light hits rod number two because of its position, but it doesn't hit one or three. So this time, one and three won't be firing at their synapses, but number two will be firing at synapse to the bipolar cell. The bipolar cell then sends an action potential again to the sensory neuron, and this goes up to the brain. So it's the same exact response because it's the same bipolar that's been told to fire and the same neuron been told to fire as well. And an action potential is the same response every time it fires. In this case, because the same bipolar cell is firing, the brain has no actual way of determining which rod cell that signal originally came from because the bipolar cell response is always the same. If we number these one to three again and have two scenarios, in the first scenario, say the low light hits number one, we have the bipolar cell firing and the brain dealing with this. So that's one pathway. If the lights were to hit number two, the response would be the same because the bipolar cell is still simulated, this time through number two, and it goes to the brain again. So every time this happens, the brain knows this bipolar cell has been stimulated, but it can't tell whether it's one, two, or three because they all cause the same thing. And this is why the resolution of the image becomes lower because the exact location of the light cannot be determined. So to illustrate this on the retina, for these rod cells, whether the light hit the rod cell which was here or here, if they both connect to the same bipolar cell, then the same response pathway will be followed either way. And the brain doesn't know whether it was this rod cell or that rod cell firing. So even though these light rays are coming from two different points, they will look to be the same thing. And overall, this will look like a blurry image. So this is why peripheral vision with rod cells is of low resolution. The visual resolution of cone cells, however, is slightly better. 
The visual resolution of the eyes is the highest at the fovea, and the fovea is a region at the back of the eye directly opposite the pupil where there's lots and lots of photoreceptors. And this has the highest resolution. And whatever you're looking at with your eyes specifically, like a letter of a word, that light will be hitting your fovea, and the rest of everything around it will be hitting your peripheral vision. So the fovea, as this part of the retina, contains mostly cone cells. So this time, we're talking about cone photoreceptors, not rods. So mostly cones found here in the fovea. And as we said in the previous video, every bipolar cell is connected to a single cone cell. So every time we have one cone, it's always connected only to one bipolar cell. There's no multiple cones to one bipolar cell this time, and this is in deep contrast to the rod cells. So in this case, whenever a cone detects light and a photoreceptor stimulates the bipolar cell, the signal is sent to the brain. So we've got color or high intensity light hitting this one. And as it hits this cone, the cone fires to the bipolar cell attached to it. This then fires to the sensory cell and this goes up to the brain. And because the brain knows exactly that one cone connects to one bipolar cell, the brain can interpret the signal as coming from that exact cone cell. So if it were to receive a signal from this photoreceptor through this bipolar to the brain, it knows that it came from this exact cone cell and not this one, because for this one it would be a different bipolar cell and therefore a different response. So this means that cone cells are much more exact. Cone cell signals therefore have a higher resolution because the location of light can be more pinpointed more accurately. So this time, two rays of light hitting the retina, particularly in the foveal region, will be hitting each their own different cone cell, and therefore each of those have their own bipolar cell, which then would each give a separate pathway of response to the brain so that it knows which is which. You also need to be aware of how the rods and cones are distributed across the retina. The parts of retina furthest away from the fovea are mostly rod cells, so we've mentioned how most of the peripheral vision, which is away from the fovea, is mostly the rod cells. But the foveal region here, the central area, is mostly cones. So rods with lower resolution are the furthest points away from the fovea. As well as multiple rod cells being connected to a neuron, the rod cells are less dense in the fovea. So if we were to look at a graph to illustrate the density, we'll call this the density of photoreceptors, and we'll see how this varies with the position of the eye. So we'll have the centre of the eye in the middle of the axis, and the periphery either side. So as we go away from the centre, we're getting out the more peripheral parts of the eye. The green area represents the cones, and you can see that the density is greater in the centre and not so much in the periphery. So in the fovea, the coloured and the high intensity light going to the cones gets a greater resolution, and it's the, the area with the highest resolution. The rods lie mostly in the periphery either side of this, and these are the areas with lower resolution. And because of this distribution, we have a low resolution in peripheral vision. So if you were to see an object off to your side, it usually looks un poorly defined and of a lower resolution. And as we've said, the cone cells in the fovea are more dense, meaning that the centre of vision is the one with the highest resolution. So if you were to look directly at that water bottle, light coming in and hitting the fovea and the centre of the retina is going to produce a much more sharp, focused image. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.